These are must-draft players at their current average draft position. Today, we're going to be breaking down five players who are going to return value. But before we dig in, head over to 444.com, enter promo code YouTube, and get yourself 25% off any subscription plan. The New York Giants select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. But a big play waiting to happen. Dynamic style of play. Now they get the most electrifying wide receiver in this class. That's Malik Neighbors. For those of us following along with the Hard Knocks series, we know that GM Joe Shane and head coach Brian Dayball were not opposed to taking a new quarterback at the top of the NFL draft. No deals would end up coming through, which leaves Daniel Jones and Drew Locke left to battle it out. In response, Vegas has the team projected for the fourth lowest points across the league, and they're only projected to score more than 21 points in four games. Their offensive line looks like it could be a huge issue once again, and their running back room is uninspiring. These are all negatives for rookie Malik Neighbors in a poor offensive environment, but he remains on fantasy radars due to what could be a massive target share. In recent years, we have seen first-year players explode onto the scene in thin wide receiver rooms. Puka Nakua earned a 26.8% target share with Cooper Cup missing time last year, while Drake London and Chris Olave notched respective 27.7% and 24.3% shares in 2022. In Jalen Waddle's lone pre-Tyreek season, he also accrued a 23.6% share. These situations don't seem all that dissimilar from Neighbors' first season, with some poor quarterback play mixed in with those receivers mentioned above. We would obviously much rather have Matthew Stafford or Tua throwing the ball to him, but our worries about Daniel Jones and Drew Locke are baked into the late fifth round price. Coming off draft boards in the wide receiver 26 range, Neighbors could operate as your fantasy squad's wide receiver three or flex option and provide some massive weeks due to his yards after catch ability. He led the entirety of the FBS with 34 catches of 20 plus yards last season while logging 3.64 yards per route run. There could be some hiccups along the way, but it's a worthy gamble for the week winning upside. Pressure again, runs away from it, throws on the run, caught, touchdown, Dalton Kincaid. The worries about Kincaid sharing the field with teammate Dawson Knox as a rookie ended up being mostly correct. According to 4 for 4's market share splits app, Kincaid had 2.5 fewer targets and over 20 fewer yards when Knox was healthy last season. When Knox was off the field, Kincaid averaged 10.7 half PPR points per game, a mark that would have ranked him top 5 among the position if extrapolated over an entire season. Compare that to his mediocre 5.5 points per game with Knox healthy. There is some silver lining here though. In the team's most important games, Kincaid became an integral part of the offense. In the four weeks between Week 17 and the divisional round of the playoffs, the rookie averaged 6.5 targets, 4.8 receptions, and 69 yards per game. That 20.2% target share was the second highest on the team over that pivotal stretch, trailing only Stephon Diggs, who is, of course, no longer on the team. Kincaid profiles as one of the few tight ends in the league who could legitimately lead his team in targets without some sort of unforeseen injury to a teammate. Dawson Knox is still in town, but Gabe Davis and Steph Diggs are not. It's Pacheco getting past the wave and finding the end zone for the touchdown. He's a one-man brotherly show. Accelerating. Pacheco in for the touchdown. The Jersey Kid. Though the former Rucker Scarlet Knights running style doesn't inspire visions of Devon Achan and explosive backs of that ilk, his position in one of the best offenses in the league places him firmly in the top options in fantasy. The Chiefs are currently projected to score the third most points in 2024, trailing only the 49ers and the Lions, while their win total sits at 11.5 on most sportsbooks. This should help lock in the workload for the team's bonafide RB1 while presenting him with plenty of touchdown equity should they be among the league leaders and points scored. In four playoff games in their Super Bowl run last season, Pacheco earned 88% of the team's running back carries and 86.1% of the total running back opportunities. No one would be willing to project that type of usage over an entire season, but it gives us a look at who they want carrying the load in the most pivotal matchups. There are some worries about Pacheco in the passing game where he earned only 0.83 yards per route run and 5.4 yards per reception, which ranked 41st and 55th, respectively, out of 61 qualifying backs. Depending on what ADP source you're using, Pacheco goes at least one full round and oftentimes two rounds after Jonathan Taylor in a better offensive environment with a quarterback who's going to take off with the ball far less. I'll take the discount with a similar upside. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Brian Thomas Jr. 
Wide receiver, LSU. A true vertical weapon. Yeah. He is silky smooth. And I love this fit here. Out goes Calvin Ridley. In comes Brian Thomas Jr. With the 18th overall selection of the 2024 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Brian Thomas Jr. The LSU Tiger switches from one cat to another and will help fill a vast hole created by the free agency loss of Calvin Ridley and the release of Zay Jones. With Christian Kirk and tight end Evan Ingram solidifying the short and intermediate areas of the field, Thomas could become the team's wide receiver one with plenty of vertical targets from quarterback Trevor Lawrence. The Jaguars are missing the second highest percentage of air yards and the highest percentage of targets from inside the opponent's 10-yard line from last season. Thomas should slide immediately into the X role in the new look Jaguars pass catching group and be on the field for nearly 100% of the snaps. If he ends up flowing directly into Ridley's role from last season, we certainly won't have any issues with volume. Ridley ran the fifth most routes in the NFL in 2023, accounting for 132 targets. The six foot four inch Brian Thomas will likely continue in the role of big bodied end zone target. The rookie might end up with the third most targets on the team, depending on what you think about the likelihood of a repeat of Ingram's huge 2023 target share, but Thomas could very reasonably lead the team in touchdowns. Brian Thomas Jr. only had one breakout season in LSU, but his athletic profile and ability to win over the top should have us excited for fantasy football. There is plenty of upside here for a player coming off the board as the wide receiver 47. One here. One timeout. Murray! Himself, sneaks in, touchdown. Murray missed the first nine games of the 2023 season with a torn ACL, but was just fine taking off the ball during his return. He racked up 44 rush attempts in his eight games and scored a touchdown in each of his first three weeks. According to Next Gen Stats, Murray finished among the top 20 fastest ball carriers on four separate occasions, so half of his games played. Per Cardinals beat writer Kyle Odegaard, the source close to the quarterback said, Last year, you didn't see the cutting or the shake and bake. Expect to see it again moving forward. Of course, this is best shape of my life season, but it would make sense that the QB wasn't fully back to 100% considering his ACL surgery took place in January of the 2023 calendar. By this September, it will be past the 18th month mark and could pack an even bigger punch on the ground than we saw in the second half of last year. In the 2020 to 2022 seasons, Murray scored 280 fantasy points through the ground game, averaging out to about 6.8 fantasy points in 41 games. This was quite a bit more than his 5.3 rushing points last season when he finished as the QB 10. A return to form as a rusher could make a bit of a steal at this price, but his supporting cast has also improved year to year. This starts at the top with fourth overall selection of blue chip wide receiving option Marvin Harrison Jr. The main options from last season were Marquise Brown, Michael Wilson, and Greg Dortch. This isn't to say the team won't also rotate Harrison into the slot, but his presence alone should help Wilson and Dorch be more efficient with their targets. With a more efficient pass-catching group and a very solid option in Trey Benson to rotate in with James Conner, Kyler should easily match his QB10 production coming off of his ACL injury with upside for much more.